Viruses are tiny little flecks of biomolecules. They're so primitive and basic that they aren't even considered to be truly alive by most biologists. Viruses lack many of the fundamental criteria that we use to define life, like the capacity to reproduce and metabolize energy on their own. Viruses can't do this on their own, and so they have to parasitically infect a host to get it done. Viruses are also small, extremely small. They're literally just a, a handful of molecules, and they look very tiny when compared to bacterial cells, which themselves look tiny compared to eukaryotic cells. However, there's a subtype of virus, creatively called the giant viruses, that are, well, giant. They're huge, even when compared to eukaryotic cells. Giant viruses can be up to half a micron in diameter, which means that you can see them under a cheap, low-power light microscope from your high school science classroom. In addition to being massive, these giant viruses are also much more complex, with larger genomes and more sophisticated structures. These giant viruses are surprisingly cell-like, to the point that they can even become infected by smaller viruses, called virophages. These virophages present a biological threat to the giant viruses. They are an evolutionary pressure, and the giant viruses have adapted to deal with them. In effect, the giant viruses have evolved immune systems, and they operate with a mechanism that's kind of like CRISPR. The CRISPR gene editing technology comes from a bacteria, but these giant viruses possess something that's roughly analogous. The discovery of this giant virus immune system has been analyzed in a new paper, written by French scientists and recently published in the journal Nature. In a nutshell, the researchers identified a virophage called Zamelon, which infects giant viruses like those in the Mimivirus genus. The scientists observed that some of these Mimiviruses were susceptible to Zamelon, but curiously, others weren't. After some genetic analysis, they determined that the giant viruses that were resistant to Zamelon had incorporated part of Zamelon's DNA into its own genome, using it as a template to recognize Zamelon and initiate an immune-like response against it. This template sequence was named Mimivire, or M-I-M-I-V-I-R-E which stands for Mimivirus Virophage Resistance Element. When this operon gene is silenced, the Mimivirus becomes susceptible to Zamelon, but when the operon gene is active, it expresses enzymes that break up foreign DNA. From the paper's abstract, quote, the Mimivir proteins possess the typical functions, nuclease and helicase, involved in the degradation of foreign nucleic acids. The viral defense system, Mimivire, represents a nucleic acid-based immunity against virophage infection." Unquote. One of the scientists doing research for this paper was named Didier Raoult, and my apologies for almost certainly ruining the pronunciation of your name. But anyway, they were one of the authors of the study, and in an interview, when talking about these giant viruses being infected by these smaller viruses and the giant viruses having this evolutionary response to them, they said, quote, They are facing the same kind of challenge that prokaryotes have when they live in communities. They need to fight against viruses and prokaryotes. I even suspect that they secrete antibiotic compounds, unquote. All of this supports a larger argument the argument that viruses are alive, and that they represent another major branch on the tree of life, perhaps one of the lowest branches, representing one of the earliest divergences in the natural history of life on Earth. Some scientists think that viruses descended from primitive bacteria-like creatures and simply lost traits and abilities as they evolved to live increasingly parasitic lives. Other scientists think that viruses diverged earlier, before cells had even formed. In this case, viruses could be descended not from some earlier cellular lineage, but from even simpler biochemical structures that were replicating before the evolution of protective membranes. 
The researchers on this paper believe this latter option to be the case. They think that their data supports this latter hypothesis. And it's all really interesting, because if this does turn out to be the case, then viruses will go from being considered not alive to being considered some of the earliest offshoots of life itself. They diverged so early that life at that point was still just broiling masses of biomolecules, not even bound up within a plasma membrane yet. That's how primitive we're talking about. That's how early in the natural history of life that these viruses may have appeared. And if that's the case, then there's a few textbooks that are going to need to be rewritten. <laughs>